Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Troy Nelson. Hello. Hey, hey, and you are back for another vinyl pickups video. Yes, I'm back for a vinyl pickups video, and I love doing these videos with you and sharing it with all of them. You are my vinyl pickups buddy. Yes, that's <laughs> <laughs> And for those of you that don't know, Troy has a, well, I was going to say history of music, but mm -hmm. you work at KXP, one of, if not the coolest radio station in all of Seattle. That's right. Uh, my show's on Saturdays from 3 to 6, but you might hear me on there throughout the week filling in for the daytime people as well. Been there for almost 12 years now. That's right. Yeah. And he is also a massive retro game collector as well. So we bond on many levels yeah. here. Well, we just, you finally saw my game room. I did. Yeah, we finally got to hang out. And, it's legit. Uh, it's yeah, cool. It was so much fun. We might have to do a game room tour yeah. on my channel. That'd and we played awesome. uh, Plumbers Don't Wear Ties on the 3DO. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I know he is a huge 3DO fan. And uh, yeah, that was really funny, actually. But this video is going to be all about vinyl. And uh, you and I have about 10 albums each mm -hmm. to show that we have picked up over the last couple months. And the cool thing is I haven't seen what he he's picked up. He hasn't yeah. seen what I picked up. Yeah, we like to keep it authentic and surprised, yeah. and we, we don't talk to each other beforehand about what we have, so. All right, well, you are the guest, so please go first. Oh, I get to go first? Yeah, I uh, would mix it up. <laughs> yes, all right. Uh, actually, I had to bring notes. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so what I want to start with is I found these, and I was very excited. Far Cry 3 oh. uh, Power Glove is, uh, oh, is the, the band, band that Power Glove yes, did the soundtrack. Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon, and then The Trials of Blood Dragon, which is like a mashup. And uh, I found those soundtracks. And very happy to find also the official Bioshock Ooh, score. I have this. You actually. do? Yeah, that came in, the, in the, it was the collector's edition of Bioshock 2. Okay. Um, and it's cool. Yeah, it's very cool. So you yeah. found this? Yeah. Wow. It, it, at uh, Easy Street Records. Oh, yep. really? Wow. And uh, thankfully, some people there will set aside video game oh, soundtracks yeah, yeah, for yeah. me. That's awesome. Yeah. So, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon is such a cool game. Mm -hmm. it, it's basically Far Cry, the first person shooter, but they, they, they go sort of like old school uh, 80s movies. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it, and, and also with like Genesis style cutscenes. Yep. Like 16 bit cutscenes. Oh, dude, yeah, I'd I love, love to hear this. This is awesome. Yeah. Huh, limited edition uh, double pink vinyl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very excited about that. Legit, man. So there you That's go. Awesome. That's my opener. All right, well, for me, um, have you heard of the band Arion? Uh, no. So uh, That cover is amazing. Isn't it amazing? So, Arion is a band, well, it's actually not a band, it's a guy who is a uh, multi uh, instrumentalist. Okay. So, he's, fr he's Dutch, mm -hmm. and basically, over the last couple, I, I, at least decade or so, he's been making epic prog rock prog metal albums mm -hmm. and this is his latest one called The Source and uh, what's really cool about him so he plays and writes most of the music uh, plays most of the instruments um, but what he does though is he hires other vocalists to do the to do the singing and play the characters so this album has i believe 11 different singers on it wow. male female all playing the different characters that make up the the story of the source this packaging yeah it's incredible i it's, love gayfold it, and he also includes in here because it's a it's a prog rock a concept album look at this yeah it's amazing uh there's also a full-size booklet in here that not only has the lyrics but also breaks down the story um it's pretty cool and what's really cool about this too is that it's called the source because it is it is technically the first in the series of albums that he has done so in other words he's gone back and basically because a lot of his albums are kind of linked via story and characters okay this is the one that ties them all together and so beautiful he, yeah it's really cool it's it's for fans who like the heavier side of prog rock kind of like the the, the heavier side like a dream theater right right this is up your alley it's fun to hear so many vocalists on one album awesome so yeah very cool yep Okay, well, I was going to save this one for last, but I'm too excited. Okay. So I have to show it to you. All right. And I've been texting you about this, too, because I was so excited to, to find this. Okay. It is the strangest thing in my record collection, and also, it's so rare, hmm. I can't find much information about it online. I found a little uh, bit of information on Discogs. I did see one a on there. A little bit on Discogs? So they know everything. They know everything, and I found one on there. Wow. Some guy had one, and so it's uh, it's extremely rare. Huh. And I had to like dig to find the information that I did. So uh, it showed up at Easy Street in this cardboard. It looked like somebody mailed it to somebody. 
not recently. <laughs> it looks old. Uh, and so somebody traded this in at Easy Street. At Easy Street. Okay. And I was lucky enough to be there when the person uh, brought it in. And so I snagged it, of course. So check this out. It's all these records right here of a concert that happened in 1983 called the Us Festival. And it's a legendary oh, uh, concert. Yes. And there was tons of bands. So from, I have to look um, at my my notes, but put the, so the uh, okay. So please. so I'll tell you this. What I found out about these records, there's 12 of them. <laughs> it's a 12-hour radio special. Right. That that was for radio, of course, and it, it was a concert that was held on Memorial Day weekend in 1983 at Glen Helen Regional Park in San Bernardino, California. Yes. And it was a festival that ran three days in 110 degree weather. But the bands that are on here are bands like Motley Crue, Judas Priest, Ozzy Osbourne, Van Halen, Scorpions, Quiet Riot, and more. And you get to hear all of these bands live performance uh, sprawled out over these 12 records. And in between uh, bands, there will be like a radio person that's acting like they're at the concert, but you can totally tell that they're not. <laughs> okay. They're like, hey, well, how's everybody doing? We're here in San Bernardino, California at right. the Ice Festival. They're like, let's kick it over to Motley Crue. <laughs> and then Motley Crue starts, I mean, it could be real. It doesn't sound yeah, real yeah, to me. Yeah. It, it was a little, like, little, little, little too perfect. You know, yeah. Well, like I said, I guess it was meant for a radio program. So what's crazy about this is that none of the labels have any of the bands, so you don't know what's, what's on them. Oh, well, check it out. So it has notes. It has the run of show from Dude. disc to disc for the radio special. Oh, cool. And so this Quiet is like. Riot. Yeah. Oh my god. Here, like the Divinals Quarter Flash. Ozzy. Oh, dude, Ozzy does a bunch of songs in here. Yep, Flock of Seagulls. Wow, uh, Wall of Voodoo, Strake. Dude, this this is epic. Yeah. This is epic. I, I couldn't believe it. It's and funny you mentioned this because I was watching a documentary about this this festival that it was legendary at the time. Yes, it was. Uh, although it huh. was it was considered a financial disaster. Well, I'm sure it was um, so expensive to do. I it read for. that there were 100 arrests. <laughs> Okay. There was 35 drug overdoses, and the festival lost 12 million dollars. And and again, I think I mentioned this when you first brought this up, but I'm pretty sure that Waz, who is the engineer for Apple at the time, mm -hmm. uh, helped pay and put this on. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, yes, I think I read that somewhere. I uh, think so the, too. Yeah. And so he. Oh, Stevie Nicks, Joe Walsh, um, Triumph. Yeah. Berlin. Dude, this it's is pretty crazy. Unbelievable. This is better than Live Aid. Yeah. <laughs> Wow! I know. I was blown away, and to, and for it to come with these, yeah, you know that it's just a piece of history. And, uh, and oh, also, since I work in radio, it's really special to me, yeah, you know, too, because this is an old radio show, and yeah. I, I get to see how they used to program these types of, you know, uh, shows uh, to look how they block the times out, and and they had to play vinyl, you yeah. know, it's yeah. just unbelievable. Dude, this is cool. There you go. This is cool. All yes. right. Well, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to top that. Well, <laughs> but I want to listen to it. So after this, yes. We'll, uh, by we'll, the way, we'll throw we, some on. we should probably mention at this point that uh, you know because of copyright, we can't really play the, the the music that we're talking about in this video. However, we'll link down below to a YouTube playlist. And well, I, I don't know how much of that we'll find, but I know there's some trailers and some some, mm -hmm. some stuff online. But a lot of this, we'll, we'll build up a playlist for people to listen to, um, you know, outside of this video. Yeah, so. absolutely. Wow, that's pretty cool. All right, what you got? All right, next up for me is a new release. This is a band yes, called Prong. Yes, I love Prong. I know, me too. I got into them when uh, during that record, uh, Prove You Wrong. Is that the name of the album? Uh, could be, but I mean, they had a they had a hit back in the '90s called "Snap Your Fingers, Snap, snap your, your Neck." Yeah, <laughs> love that. Uh, I was a big, big fan of Prong, but I did sort of lose sight of them. So I'm glad yeah. to see that they have a new album. Yeah, so they were they were definitely this kind of up and coming metal band in the '90s. Uh, they described their music as sort of thrash meets kind of now it's called groove metal. Yeah, you know, um, they're right there at the forefront. Yes, um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And so this is actually, uh, you know, brand new. Came out this year. Cool. Uh, I, you know, look at that cover. Great cover. Look at that cover. Great I know. Cover. Double album. I believe this is see-through red vinyl. So mm. they always do like a really cool pressing on vinyl. And it also another thing that they do is that they always include a CD. Oh, so, yeah, that's so nice. in here is a CD for you to listen to your car or yep. to rip to your own MP3. I still listen to CDs in my car. Yeah, me too. I know. So uh, new prong. Here we go. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah I, I love Prong. They, they came out right at that time when I was getting into heavy music. Yeah. 
uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. And it was like prong, and then there was helmet that was kind of doing the groove heavy yep. thing, you know, helmet. and I loved helmet. Loved helmet. Awesome. All right, so uh, I also have a friend who works at Rhino Records. Oh. And Rhino Love is Rhino. an amazing, yes. they, they reissue records, they do beautiful packaging. Yes. They and also reissue the, the the music videos for a lot of bands too. That's right. Like they'll remaster them for uh, you know 1080p and put them up on YouTube. And that's so right. I'm a subscriber of their channel, and they released all the docking videos. Awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. They just do amazing work and they put out so much stuff a year. And uh, my dear friend Jason, who works there, uh, no coincidence uh, that I just realized, um, I, is uh, he sends me little treats. Oh, really? And so this was a nice little treat to get hmm. was the entire Ozzy era <laughs> oh Black Sabbath album reissued. Oh, dude. On vinyl. Wow. wow. So they reissued all of these. Yeah, every single Ozzy Black Sabbath record. Oh my goodness. We and there is just beautiful uh, pressings of, of each album. And oh, of, and Black man. Sabbath is my favorite rock band of yeah. all time. Yeah. So Well, uh, this period. It, yeah. It, it, I mean, this period, for sure. The, the first nothing four against... albums, you couldn't... There's, there's nothing wrong with them. Yep. Like, every single one of them is just epic. Epic. You know? And then, actually, you know, it's funny because you also have in here uh, Technical Ecstasy, which is an, uh, and also Never Say Die, um, and then what's the, Past Lives? Oh, is this like That's a... That's a, uh, I believe it's a live... Okay. ...concert huh. or something, but... But these are two albums where they start adding keyboards and stuff yeah, yeah. and get a little bit proggy, yep. a little bit sort of... And their fans at the time were probably not happy about it, but I actually, I love it. I yeah. dig it. I dig it. Wow, that's, oh, dude, okay, yeah. well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I was like, um, thank you. Uh, yeah, so I, I have a, a decent collection of uh, Black Sabbath, but it's the original pressings back then, you know? Yes. So, but those are all gatefold, which they, I, I don't think the originals were. I don't think they were either, at least uh, the mm. ones that I've had. Yeah. And and believe me, I'm one of those people that really prefer original pressings of things, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if somebody sends you a gift... You're not going to complain. Yeah, I am not going you're to not, at all. No, you're not. No. <laughs> All right, next up for me is a newer band. Um, it is, a, I sent you a text yes, about this. Yes, yes. Dorothy, and this is called uh, Rock is Dead. First of all, awesome band name, yes. awesome cover, yes. and I loved the music too. Yeah, and they, uh, so, so, so this band is, uh, it, it's named after the lead singer. Her name is Dorothy. Mm -hmm. um, they've gone on tour recently with Hailstorm and also Lita Ford. Oh, cool. Yeah, but their music is is great. It's a, it's I would describe it as a mix of the White Stripes meets early Black Sabbath. Yeah, because they definitely have that old school blues rock. It, it's it's a little bit heavy, but it's very. Um, I don't know, Rootsy as well. Yeah. Uh, it's a great album, and it, it comes on white vinyl, which is cool. Beautiful. Um, oh, and you have your sleeves. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Violin. <laughs> Anytime that I buy a record, yeah, as, a, as you know, it's like, and it comes with like a paper sleeve. I'm like, please. <laughs> <laughs> Let me upgrade that for you. Uh, great album. Actually, this has been, uh, I've been playing this a lot. Yeah. This is a, it, it's a fairly short album. It's mm -hmm. only about 30, 40 minutes long, and it just, you know, it, 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 you just put on repeat and it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, also, they do great music videos. Some of them are very funny. Yeah. Uh, you would never think for a band like this, but uh, we'll, we'll put a link down in the video description below. Definitely check out Dorothy. I'm really digging this. Uh, I agree. Um, I am... What do I do next here? All right, well, speaking of uh, reissues, and you and I have talked about this band, but uh, this is kind of cool. Uh, the first, oh, all yeah. the, uh, well, the complete studio albums of Pantera, <laughs> and it, wow. uh, in this, but I haven't even opened it fully yet, which yeah. we can do right now, <laughs> and uh, we'll tear this baby open. Is this another Rhino release? This is another okay. Rhino release, and, Dude, that's so and Pantera cool. was one of the first, I was 14 years old when I heard Cowboys from Hell. Okay. And I, it blew my mind. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is like a different kind of heavy. Yeah. And then Vulgar Display of Power. Vulgar I was like, she, I, to me, that's the album. This is a masterpiece. Yes. Even today, you know, and it's funny, uh, my wife Rebecca, she's not really a metalhead per mm -hmm. se. Right. She loves this album. She loves this album more than I do. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, uh, she has to hear walk. Speaking of hilarious, know? awesome covers, though. It's oh, like... I know. <laughs> Yeah. That's kind of what the album sounds like, really. It's a good representation. I know. And, and when this came out, it's just like, who is this? Yeah. You know? 
Uh, it's cool that you have this also. This album, I believe, historically, now correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but this was the first metal album to go number one. Oh, I think you're right. Or something like, or debut at number one or De something like yep. that. It was huge buzz for this album. and. Uh, it has some classic songs on it. I think you'll probably agree that it's not quite the level of full, uh, you know, vulgar display of power. Not, but it has its own charm and it sound. Does. Is that the one that has five minutes alone? On yes, it? and also I'm Broken. I'm Broken. Oh That's... my god, so good. Yeah. Uh, and also Planet Caravan, which is a cover of Black Sabbath. See, tying in a, the Black Sabbath That's a great again. Wow, dude, this is so cool. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Is there any other goodies in there? There is. Oh, what is, oh, oh. oh a seven inch. What is that? Piss and avoid the light. And it's piss colored vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't know. Okay. Okay. I, are those, those must be like maybe unreleased tracks or something. I don't know. I'll have to check it out after yeah. the video. So. Well, we'll just look at the comment section. Yeah. That's where we learn everything. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of the 90s, I found this album, uh, saw this tour. Mm. White Zombie, mm. Astro Creep 2000. I love White Zombie. I know, me too. Yeah. This album, uh, their first two albums, well, I, yeah, they only did three. I think the next one was a dance right. yeah. remix album. But, right. Uh, saw them on tour for this. I was big into White Zombie at the time. This is a classic from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rob's been putting out, uh, re-releasing some of these on vinyl. Um, I know he did a box set as well. Mm -hmm. I think it also includes a lot of his solo stuff as well. Right. But uh, I just, you know, just... I, I, you know, you see these and you're like, oh, I don't have this on vinyl yet. I need to have it on vinyl. So, yeah. uh, great sounding album. You know, cool what, what band you too. Uh, Sean is the bass player's name. She's when I saw her on MTV, some kind of 120 minutes thing or something, some Halloween thing. She just it was, it was is amazing. I was watching her play, and she's yeah. a fantastic bass player and and just a cool band. Yeah, general. totally cool band. And again, a great live show at the time. It it, it, it was uh you know in the, in the 90s there wasn't a ton of bands that were doing that kind of Kiss show mm. with with. Uh, Theatrics and yep. explosions and stuff, and yeah. White Zombie did that. They blew my hair back. It was awesome. I can imagine. Okay, so here is. Uh, well, I found this, and I'll share it because we okay. both have a love for Prince. Oh yes. And uh, Prince came up in our last vinyl pickups, yep, yep. and that is the single to "You Got the Look." You so you get, uh, and like a lot of 12-inch singles, you get the. You get the this version of it, and oh, that version yeah, of it, like, the yeah, extended the, the, the 12 remix. Inch, yeah, yeah the, the 12 minute dance version. Yeah, so. exactly. But I just huh. found that. I know we love prints, and I was like, yeah, man, we're gonna, we need to inject some prints into this situation. Always, 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 absolutely. Always. It's funny you mentioned prints. Is that on YouTube? You know how it recommends stuff. Yeah. Uh, a an interview, a more recent interview with Prince came up where he was in, being interviewed by, um, oh crap, who's the guy on CNN? He's the guy with the the suspenders. Oh, oh, Larry King. Larry Larry King. Oh, yeah, I watched that interview. Larry King interviews Prince, and it was awkward and awesome at the same time. Yep. I mean, it really, I was really blown away by it. I totally. Mean, I just, I'm a huge fan of Prince. It sucks that he's gone. It sucks so bad. Yeah. And now that he is gone, though, uh, all these YouTube videos are popping yeah. up that he would probably try to take down. True. So, you know, I, I mean, at first I felt kind of bad watching him. Like, you know, would he want uh, people to see these? <laughs> But they're amazing. It's amazing. Like and you can't rehearsal stop. footage and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Full concerts. I know it's amazing. Yeah. Um, but and sp speaking of recommending something, watching Prince do the guitar solo to "While My Guitar Gently Weeps," oh. um, he's live on stage with like people that. from ELO and Danny Harrison. Yeah. And, uh, it is w absolutely mind-boggling. He throws his guitar up at the end of it, and it doesn't come back down. <laughs> he, he's playing, he's playing, he throws it up in the air, he walks off stage, and the guitar doesn't come back down. I, it, huh. I'm telling you, it went to check heaven. it out. It went to, it went to, <laughs> went to guitar heaven. <laughs> went to guitar heaven. All right. All right, you mentioned this band, not knowing I picked it up. What? Oh my gosh! Yes, Helmet! No way. I know! Amazing! Again, another album that came out recently where I was like, what? That's, you know, oh my, I'm so jealous. It's red and blue, just yes, like the cover. Yes, and so this album was, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. is one of those pinnacle uh, 90s rock metal albums of the time and yeah. unsung even to this day. Like, like I'll, I'll, I'll tune down my guitar. I still play and, that on, K on KXP. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's timeless. It's perfect. Yep. It's such a great song. And what I love about Helmet 2 is that they're kind of weird. They're also, you know, like, yeah. like their albums, 
Like their songs, they don't have necessarily one formula. Like you think that they would where it's, they, they definitely have a style, but then they'll go off and do something really weird and yep. uh, distorted and dissident for a while. Yep. And it's just such a great band. And um, yeah, so I saw this and I had to pick it up. It, it's uh, That album changed my life really. And yeah. I, I don't use that term loose, loosely. It, yeah. uh, that uh, Any aspiring drummers oh. out there, um, I forget how to pronounce his last name. I know his name's John Stanier or something. Um, once again, in the comments, they'll let me know sure, the pronunciation. Sure. Uh, one of my favorite drummers. It's such a great record for learning time signatures, yes. odd time signatures. And so tight. Like, like again, so the, the song, and so many of these songs, like, like the guitar, the drums, the bass, everything mm -hmm. is just locked into this groove like a machine. And it's it was amazing. All, and what was cool is when I was a kid, I would hear this music and I'd be like, oh my God, what do these guys look like? And they were like clean cut, short hair. Yeah. Paige Hamilton wear, wore like a baseball hat. And just, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm like, know, that's you, the band? You, you would think they'd be scary. I thought right? they'd be yeah, scary. Yeah. And they're just, uh, you know, yeah. very, very basic. Yep, so very happy to have Meantime. Uh, that's amazing. And one of my favorite albums. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Okay, so I know that we do a lot of vinyl. I'm going to break the rule just a little bit. Okay. Because I had to bring a CD-based item okay. Okay. that I picked up. Troy is a big CD collector. He has a wall of CDs. I do, it's but very it, impressive. It, it is for my job. But anyway, wow. all the uh, early Sepultura albums in this great little package right here. But it comes, Dude. they're like mini versions of the vinyl. Dude, yeah. this is so cool. So, oh my God. You know, I there was a time, there was a time when I was absolutely obsessed with Sepultura. Yes, me too. Re I mean, so... Arise. It to started me, with that's Arise. The album. Me too. This album, even today, top to bottom, I could put it on, and it's just like it's a, it's a heavy metal masterpiece. I, it really is. Mm -hmm. Like it's a thrash metal. And it, what I love about Sepultura, for those of you who don't know, is that they're a Brazilian thrash metal band, I believe. That's right. They're from South America, and they just have a very unique spin on all that. They, they don't do. sound like Slayer. They don't sound like anybody it's else. Metallica. And then what they did is they went on and they just expanded upon that. So Chaos AD, which this is kind of their breakout album. That's right. This is this is where they started injecting even more a little bit tribal rhythms into yep. it, uh, but still a great album. And then they just went, they they went crazy on on roots. Mm -hmm. And again, this is a really interesting wild album where it's it's even more tribal, but yep. yet still has thrash. It's such this is, I'm jealous. Yeah, <laughs> so that's cool, man. That's really really cool. Awesome, awesome. Uh, right, next up. Get? I'm wearing their band shirt. Oh. I bought their band, it's a new band. It's called Night Demon. This uh, is their second album. Great name, again. Yeah. Uh, so they're a new band, but basically what they sound like is that uh, new wave of British heavy metal, oh. they play that style of, of music, but today. Uh, so Yes, please. Yeah, so this reminds me of those first couple Iron Maiden albums where it's a little bit of punk, a little bit of metal. Uh, that sounds right up my alley. Yeah, very riff driven. Uh, just, you know, fast and furious. What I love about this album is, so this is, just came out this year. They actually have a, they wrote a, tr a brand new song. It's a tribute to Iron Maiden called Maiden Hell. Maiden Hell. Maiden Hell, and the lyrics are all Iron Maiden song titles. So they basically created a, a narrative using uh. Iron Maiden song titles. That's really cool. And they just weave it all together in this one song dedicated to Iron Maiden. It's super cool. That's really cool. Yeah, it's definitely a, a cool band. Up and coming. Uh, like I said, I'm wearing their shirt. Love their their first album. This second one's really great too. Night Demon. Night Demon. Now, one of those covers that you could just stare at forever and find new things every time you look <laughs> at it. Yeah. Like one of these days you're gonna be like, oh, I never saw that plastic bag floating in the right, yeah. yeah, Just like those original Iron Maiden albums, right? Where you're getting really close, you're yes. like, there's some dude in the background, exactly, you know? Exactly, exactly. All right. Um, so speaking of, you're talking about them doing that song, a tribute to Iron Maiden and taking all the song titles and weaving them yep. into a song. Uh, this band does the same thing on a track on this album. Now this is, have you ever heard of Scatterbrain? Oh, this sounds really familiar. Okay, so this is a band that came out in uh, the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. And they were sort of a joke heavy metal band. Okay, is that almost like, uh, what's that band, um, Cat in the Cradle they did? Uh, oh, Ugly Kid Joe? Yes, are they kind of like that? Uh, these guys were more all up into thrash metal. Okay, okay. So it was more of a metal thing. And they dressed, they looked metal, long yeah. hair, and they hmm. played metal. But anyway, they have a song on here called Down With The Ship, and I had to bring my notes again. Uh, 
th that song in particular, I highly recommend to you because <laughs> it contains. They, I'm laughing at the lyric. Title they just here. blatantly rip off riffs. Okay. And they piece together this Frankenstein of a song using some of the most iconic guitar riffs, but they only play them for like oh, really? just like three seconds D the to get away with yeah, it. Yeah. So they do uh, on Down with the Ship. It has snippets of Van Halen's "Ain't Talking About Love," Jimi Hendrix, um, Metallica's "Seek and Destroy," really? Led Zeppelin, Iron Maiden, oh. and uh, even Phil Collins. And they just play it just long enough, and then it moves to the next little section. And this song, called Down With The Ship, is just a chain of ripping off a bunch of bands. Really? And it's actually done pretty well, and it's kind of fun. They have a music video for it that you can watch on YouTube, but okay. they have a song that was their minor hit that was played on maybe Headbangers Ball or something was a song called Don't Call Me Dude, and it was about how they don't like when people, you know, call that each sounds, other dude. That sounds familiar, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, that, yeah, we'll, I'll have to check that out. That's awesome. Right. And I don't know what their thing is against dude. I think dude's fine. We call I, each other I dude. I say dude all the time. I think that's how we start every text message back to each, <laughs> to each other is dude. Well, I, I feel like I've lived long enough that some of the things that were, you know, cool back in the day weren't cool. Now they're cool again. It's it's just, it's you know, you live long it enough, comes, it, it just comes around. It comes around. Yeah. Yeah, you watch. In five years, the Panasonic 3DO is going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up for me is not a rock album, mm. but I became obsessed with them, and that is Washed Out. So you like Washed Out. That's amazing. I really, really do. So, um, you know, th this came up, you, you know how on your phone, you know, Apple Music, whatever, or yes. Spotify, it'll recommend stuff. And, uh, you know, every once in a while, I'll just be like, let's try it. Mm -hmm. And Washed Out came up on there, and I was like, you know, if, it, if the mood hits you, it's amazing. And so... Washed Out, I would describe, because uh, I haven't really followed them a lot, but it's called Chill Wave. It is. It's basically like mellow. It reminded me of some of the more mellower parts of My Bloody Valentine, yep. where it's like wall or wave of sound, um, very chill, you know? It is. It's beautiful stuff. Yeah. And uh, done well. Is this their new, new album, or is that an old I, album? That one, I think, is from a couple years yeah, ago. Yeah, 2011. And put out by local label Sub Pop. Yep, yep, exactly. Again, an, an album that I I would never have taken you know took a chance on. Right. But again, when I when it comes on, I was like, and it, it they uh, my my phone had like a mix of all of their stuff, mm -hmm. and I want I want it all. Yeah. It's so good. It's great. Do you guys play this type of stuff on? Absolutely. PC? Washed out okay. has, is in rotation every time they put out a record. It's uh, yeah. It's a, definitely a KEXP fave. Yeah. So a little bit of surprise there. That did surprise me. Yes. I was like, what's the next metal thing? <laughs> Uh, so speaking of uh, new music, since you busted out new, okay. I want to talk about this band that's been around for a couple years, but they're still new. They just released their debut full length, but they're a band called Sheer Mag, and hmm. these, this band is such a great throwback to all the rock and roll that you and I have discussed and love. There's elements of early era Motley Crue, like Too Fast for Love oh, era really? Motley Crue. Uh, there's elements of... I, it's kind of hard to explain because she has one of the most fantastic voices. Oh, female and singer. Yes, in absolutely. Rock. I'm and sold. she has this distorted microphone effect on on her voice all the time. I've seen them live and she's just a badass huh. and tough. And like I, I mean I can feel the grit and the spit when I listen to this band, but they're brand new and uh, really? I, I highly recommend Sheer Mag, especially that song in there called Fan the Flames. Okay. It's, I, I mean, it's so hard to describe, but yet it's so familiar. Wow, you were speaking my language with that. That yeah. sounds awesome. Yeah. All right, next up for me is a bit of a surprise, um, maybe for some people, but I am a huge Beatles fan. Mm -hmm. Me too. A lot of people who listen, you know, like music, uh, love the Beatles. Well. Some a, a very oh, you got it. yes a very significant release just came out and that is the remaster the 50th anniversary remaster of Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club. Oh, I can't wait! I haven't heard this yet. Now here's the thing about this is that this has been re-released in you know certain forms for quite a while, right? Mm. But what's significant about this is that originally this album was groundbreaking for the time because they use four track so essentially that's four tracks you know you can rec you can have four microphones and then what they would do is they would mix those four down to one mm -hmm. and then now it frees up three and then you can record three other instruments and then you mix those down into one and right. then you, you know and they did that for this album and there's a lot going on here there's a full orchestra well what they did was they went back Mm -hmm. and got all of those original tracks 
and put them out on you know a modern console and we're able to remix this thing for the very first time for for a you know for listening now basically yeah. you know using new technology but not altering it enough to where it doesn't sound familiar sure so for instance you hear you hear instruments that you just have never heard before oh man i'm you excited know, about that because this. again they were able to separate all of those those instruments out and and really do them just right because sometimes with mono mixes uh, and especially back in the day if there was you know eight instruments going on at the same time uh, an instrument or three could get kind of drowned out. Very much so, so with drums. This is right now everything's clear. Yes, and you really do hear things, and so it, it's truly st uh, stereo separated. It's amazing to hear. You hear stuff you've never heard before. Oh man! Um, so that's that's really cool. So the, obviously the uh, uh, you know that's the first album, and then the second album is a bunch of uh, alternate takes oh. of every single song. So it's the exact same album, but just different. So different takes of those songs. Right. So. It's really cool because you get to hear the Beatles building the album. So, for instance, there might be like, uh, you know, one of the songs doesn't have all doesn't have the chorus yet, right? Or you'll hear them kind of scatting along and trying to build up the song. It's really, really neat. So cool. Yeah, so cool. So I just want to mention that. I can't wait to hear that. I, I yeah, I saw it. Very. It's totally legit. Okay. I'm interested. Yep. Of course. Beatles. Yeah. Know. Was that your last one? Nope. I have... Oh. What do you got left? Oh, you got two, two more. Okay. Um, so, actually, I am going to go back to... Well, uh, I'm going to do this one. So, you and I have uh, love for the band Def Leppard. Yes. And we've talked about that many times. Yes. Um, that's another band that, that Sheer Mag Band uh, probably loves as well. Huh. But uh, I can't remember how I obtained this. It was actually, uh, um, well, by luck, I'll tell you that. Oh. So this is the live yes. and more concert, but the thing is, it's autographed by all the band members. What? Where did you get this? I'm trying to remember, <laughs> but it's legit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I know. It was uh, through the, whatever the label is, I can't remember what the label is, but it was a, um, like a promo, and they sent them to uh, like places like Easy Street Records. Okay. And they're like, hey, we're gonna send you three copies of the autographed version. Wow. And that's what it was. And so I was lucky enough to be there at Easy Street when that. And they know in. you love Def Leppard. Yeah. <laughs> and I am like grabbing that for sure. So the concert's great. It sounds good. They play a lot of their old stuff, which yeah. is obviously what uh, I consider their best stuff. Sick uh, Switch Six uh, Two Five is yeah. one of my favorites. Yep. Um, yeah. This is actually a good little mix of new and old. It like, is. Yeah. But I really just brought it because it's autographed by the damn band. Wow, dude, that is <laughs> awesome. Huh? I'd like to hear that. That's, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. I, I feel. I, I'm nervous to touch it because you don't want to smear it or something. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next up for me, again, another surprise, not rock. Okay. And I saw this at Easy Street and I had to own it. Okay. Are you familiar with the band uh, Scott Bradley's Postmodern Jukebox? I have no idea what this is. This is awesome. So this is a guy who basically on YouTube in his... New York apartment would invite a bunch of people over uh -huh. and jam live uh, on YouTube and basically recreate a bunch of pop songs. So so it's it's Motown jazz bebop versions of well let's see here uh, creep, creep which is that song is amazing. Now we're talking the TLC creep. No, we're talking uh, Radiohead. Radiohead creep. Okay. Radiohead, no diggity, but again it's done in kind of Motown bebop style. Um, I believe in a thing called love, which of course is uh, the darkness. The darkness. Thank you. My heart will go on. Stacy's mom has got it going on. Uh, sweet child of mine, thrifts. Thrift, thrift shop. shop. Ooh, I gotta get um, that. Seven Nation Army. So this this is one of those really cool albums where if you're at a party, you put it on, and people are you know they don't realize it, and then all of a sudden it stops, and they're like, oh my god, this is like Radiohead. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. But done in a very classy, they're all amazing musicians. The woman who sings, uh, Haley Reinhardt, who sings Creep, it gives you chills. And actually, I'm going to link to that, that video down below. Oh, um, it's I it, can't like, wait to hear this. It, it's hard It's hard for me to say if I actually like the Radiohead version better or that. Because really? that version is like, it gives you chills. Right. It's pretty awesome. Okay. I so, got to hear that thrift shop. And, yeah. And uh, Lord's Royals. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm, There's a bunch of great stuff on here. So. I, I cannot wait to hear that. Over one billion views online. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, 
I picked this up. It was actually a record store day release uh, from a couple years ago. Ooh. And I was lucky enough to find one because I really wanted it when it when it had come out. It is not only the Ghostbusters theme oh. song, but it's on glow in the dark green vinyl. Dude, <laughs> that is cool. I didn't even know that they did this. Yeah, it was, I mean it was very limited, so I was happy to get one because oh, dude. obviously a huge part of uh, my childhood, but also. Yeah. Glow in the dark green vinyl. That, that is so <laughs> rad, dude. That is so awesome. Yeah. Okay, I'm jealous. <laughs> um, and then I just have one more. Do you, are you? I think I'm down to one. Okay, so for I mine, am. yep. Um, a fan of my channel. So I every once in a while in here, I'll talk about you know bands I'm really into or whatever. Yep. There's there's one band. Do you remember in the '80s they were called Kingdom Come? Hmm. No. Kingdom Come put out an album in like 1987 okay. and they they immediately got destroyed by the US press as, as being too Led Zeppelin like. Oh. They're fantastic musicians but their album really did sound like Led Zeppelin. Right. And the thing about, about King, Kingdom Come I feel is that um, they would be more tolerated today because I think people today are like, oh, they sound like Black Sabbath and you move on and no one really destroys them. No, they, I actually, I love that. I'm like, yeah, yeah I know me too. I love that when bands sound like other bands. I yeah, love. I don't, it, it doesn't bother me. I mean, you can tell when it's, when it's honest. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I always felt like Kingdom Come kind of got a, 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 a bad rap yeah. from that. And so they, they didn't really put out any more albums here. Yeah. So a fan of my channel was like, oh, well they put out a bunch of them in Europe. Oh. Do you want some? And so he sent them so he sent me albums that just never, that I, as far as I'm aware of, came out here. So, cool. uh, Kingdom Come, Bad Image, and then also Hands of Time. And they basically have four albums that are just considered classics. And uh, now I have all four of them, thanks to this guy. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, just, I, I know it's kind of hard to describe, but they basically are very, again, high musicianship, high musicianship, <laughs> so I'm trying to say. And then also, you know, just great rock. You know, heavy hard rock album, you know, mm -hmm. songs and uh, sound like Led Zeppelin. <laughs> They've got some great song titles like Blood on the Land. But I like this one. You're not the only dot 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 I know. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not from here. I, I want to say they're uh, German or... Hmm. People are going to correct Comment me. section. Yeah, sorry about that. But they're, uh, again, they, they tried to, to break it over here in America. They crashed and burned but I am a big fan and now I have well it sucks that they come over here they're ready to rock and then yeah. critics are just panning them like, yeah let it, them it was it was completely let them unfair. breathe a little it was completely here. unfair this so, is great this yeah is great. So, so thank you so much wow um all right last one so br br bringing it right back around to video games again such a strange find it's video game breaks and sound effects I know believe what? me I was like what the hell what is, is this I put it on, it's really cool. It's got samples of like uh, Contra, Galaga, Metroid, Zelda, and it's uh, put to beats. Really? So it's the music from the games, but it's got these great break beats behind them. It was just a weird find. It, it almost looks like it was like, it's like a bootleg or it's like, yeah. Ill, Ill, it feels yeah, illegal. Yeah, it probably, yeah. I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily licensed, but oh well. Exactly. And huh. uh, it's, it's pretty great. I guess his name is, um, I don't know what his name is actually. Uh, DJ Rob, DJ Rob and DJ JS-1. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, they took all of Wow. Uh, my favorite, cra even Crazy Taxi, Tomb and Raider, Soul Calibur. Wow. And they just Street Fighter Two. Yeah, it's a bunch of stuff. Yeah, they just put these beats behind it. It's actually We've even cool. included sounds from AOL. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you've got mail. <laughs> <laughs> you've got, you've got, you've got mail. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that is so funny. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Wow, that is really cool. Yeah. Well, there well, it is. We done did it again. I know. It's it's, it's time flies. It's yes. like oh my god. And so, it's always a pleasure uh, to to do these with you and to share also with all of you. Um, you know, maybe you can go search if you found anything that looks interesting. You can go search these out too because it's it's also fun uh, finding obscure weird gems. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, kind of like games. I mean, it for, is kind of like for, for it me. Is. It feels very similar to you know hunting for those those weird hidden gems. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. Plus new stuff. I, mean, I, I buy video games based on the cover. If it looks really interesting yeah. or, or or wacky or yeah. something, I'll 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 buy it and check it out. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's cool, man. Yeah. All right. 
so where can people find you on the internet? Uh, I'm Like I said, I'm on KEXP. My show's on Saturdays from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So if you ever hear me on there, you can send me a message at the, mm -hmm. the KEXP DJ email. Which you, is, yeah, you can actually like request songs. And, yeah, you can text yeah. Uh, and request songs to KEXP. So DJ at KEXP.org. Um, you gotta play some of that uh, the, the, um, Far Cry uh, <laughs> Blood Dragon. Yeah. That'd be funny. Well, and also, uh, International Video Game Day is coming up. You and mentioned I gotta get you in there I to know. talk about it. And I wanna talk when about... When is that? Do you remember? It's September, beginning of September. It's coming up. Okay. So we're gonna have to make a plan. Okay. But, uh, and we're gonna t have to talk about the guy who made an album on an NES cartridge. Remember? Oh, when, yes. When we were in Portland? Yes. Amazing. Yeah, I know. We gotta He's talk working on another it. one, too, but, but he... he it, and it's going to be even like more yeah it's, it's like an cool. actual nes you yeah. put it in and there's like track listing yeah yeah and, and it's actual digital audio it's, so it's cool. amazing actually if you want to watch that video i'll put it up in the corner here so check it out there you go all right guys thanks so much for watching thank you for subscribing and take care i really love doing these videos with troy he is my music buddy he and i are always talking music and uh it's cool that he used to work at easy street i go there all the time because Yes, there are old albums that I can dig into that maybe I didn't own or maybe I owned in the past, but there are so many new reissues as you saw in this video. Speaking of videos about music, I try to do these with Troy about every couple months, maybe every three months or so, you know, when we got a nice little stack of stuff that we can show on camera. And so you're gonna to wanna to be subscribed because in addition to doing these music ones, I also do video game stuff, as you guys probably know. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and thanks for subscribing. Take care.